Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. You can tell by the title of this video um, what's going on here. So let's get started, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, Matthew chapter 5 verse 23. Get out your King James Bibles. <laughs> I got both of my King James Bibles here. Um, get out your King James Bibles. Uh, perfect written word. And please follow along. I'm going to go off the notes. I won't be turning there because I'm trying to get this to, through this really quick. Okay? But not too quick. Matthew 5.23 Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there remember that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave, thy, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Why am I reading this? Because I want you to know, Brother Jesus Christ, I got, I'm not going to read private emails, but I've emailed Brother Brian. I've tried reaching out to him. Let's talk. Let's do a Bible study. Let's see where the Bible's right and we're wrong. Let's see where the Bible's right and we, including Brother Brian, where we are wrong and where the Bible's correct. And he slapped my hand away. Okay. And he did something where he crossed the line. And we're going to talk about that. Okay. But he broke fellowship with me. I can't go to him like the Bible says because he broke fellowship with me. So now I'm going to rebuke him before all that others may fear. Them that sin rebuke before all that others may fear. Matthew 18.15 says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Brother Brian, when we get done with this, you're going to see Brother Brian just stabbed me in the back. Okay. Normally, according to the scriptures, I would go to him one-on-one -on -one and say, Why'd you do that, brother? Why'd you do that? But I can't. He broke fellowship with me. But I want you to know that the proper way to do things is you go to that person one-on-one -on -one first. Okay. So, we're going to play a clip real quick. And if I can move stuff around, I got so much stuff on here. Um, we're going to play a clip real quick. So let's go ahead and play it real quick. How do you de deal with betrayal and slander um, on a daily basis? <laughs> um, how do I deal with betrayal? Well, I just, I kind of give it over to the Lord and just say, okay, Lord, you know, they did this to you. It's happening to me. They're people are lying about me and, and whatever else. This guy used to be a friend of the ministry. Now he's stabbing me in the back. There, there are people whose whole ministry now is all just attacking me and tearing down everything I do. Latest one is Philip Newton, just to put it out there. Um, Philip Newton is not qualified to be a preacher. I, he um, basically committed fornication with a woman, claimed it was marriage. And then, you know, oh, it's not, it's not really, uh, you know, it, it didn't work out because she was abusive and she or she was this and she was that. Um, it was not uh, he, a real marriage. And that's why I just call it fornication. Um, I don't agree with him at all and what he's doing. And he, there's clearly emulation of me. And it's just it's disgusting. It really is. Um, I do not recommend Philip Newton. I've asked him to remove my videos. And last I checked this morning, he still hasn't done it yet. Um, so I have to warn about uh, Philip Newton. Uh, don't mess with him. There's some major problems there. Um, major. Um, anybody can disagree with me on the Christmas thing. And they say I'm not into it, whatever. But it's a liberty issue. And I don't care what anybody says. It's a liberty issue. And that's the way it is. So somebody wants to go over there and mess around, you're going to get messed up with him. Um, he has no business teaching or preaching the word of God. And um, that's just the way it is. So there, there'll be stuff coming out on him if he doesn't, um, doesn't repent. And just, you know, he, he was actually going to delete his whole channel and everything else. And I tried, well, you know, just do some videos, you know, maybe not real heavy doctrine type of stuff. And uh, just, you know, take it easy, be careful. You know, you, you don't qualify to be a, a pastor. First Timothy chapter three, you're not qualified for that. Um, but you know, you can make some Christian videos, just nothing real big and whatever else. And he's just gone off the deep end. So um, avoid Philip Newton. Um, I would avoid him like the plague. 
So uh, just to put that out there, like I said. Um, so to answer the question about betrayal, yes, it's happened quite a few times, and I just kind of accept it and move on. Uh, slander. Again, I just let the Lord take care of it. If people have to lie about me to make their points, you know, whatever. Okay, now. All right, what am I supposed to do? Just sit here and be quiet? Nope, I can't. Okay, brother says Christ. The question was asked, how do you deal with betrayal and slander? Okay. That's what Brian was asked. And if you actually listen to the whole thing, by the time we get done, you're going to realize that what his real answer was, how, how do you deal with betrayal and slander? And the word deal, I did a study once, how to react to the lost world. Someone corrected me and said a better word would have been deal. A Bible word is deal. And that brother was correct. Thank you for that correction, brother. Um, but how did Brian respond to truly respond to that question? I'll tell you how he truly responded. He responded by basically saying, why betraying and slandering them back? If someone wore evil with evil, if someone slanders, uh, betrays you and sl uh, slanders you, what do you do? You just do it right back to them. Okay. Statements he made, Philip is not qualified to be in ministry. Why? Fornicated with a woman and claimed it was marriage when it wasn't marriage. Now, I've been quoting this to Brother Brian a lot lately. Matthew 12, 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Okay. I emailed Brother Brian before I got married. Told him about her. Now here's the thing, real quick. I don't blame Brother Brian for what happened. He only had the information that I gave him when it came to what kind of person she was. That was my fault. And as we get in here, you're going to be shocked. I'm going to be saying I'm 100% at fault when it came to this. But let's get into this real quick. I emailed Brother Brian and asked him, how did you get married? What was the right way of getting married? And he told me about the marriage coacher and how him and his wife got married through a marriage coacher. I think he had his wife, parents as the um, uh, witnesses. Okay. So I got advice from Brother Brian. Okay. Now here's the thing, I got married the same way Brother Brian got married. I got married on the beach with two witnesses. I even have, I still have my marriage vows. Okay. My marriage vows right here. Oh, almost line up with that teaching I did on men's responsibility in marriage. So I was excited. So I do this. Okay, I had vows. I vowed, you know. To give my life and saving of yours, to protect you at all costs. Your life is precious to me. You will be, you will always come first before anyone in the world, not Jesus Christ, but anybody in the world. Okay. And I remember saying, I said, when you see a bear, you run. I charge. Ephesians 5:28. You got to be willing to give your life for your wife, like Christ gave His life for the church. I have, I have uh, vows. We got married in the church. We got. Two witnesses to sign. I bought, ordered a Bible that had a marriage coverture in it. And we got two witnesses. The Bible says before two or three witnesses, let every word be established. All right. We did a marriage coverture and I followed Brother Brian's instruction. So you're saying, well, why did you read Matthew chapter 12, 34? By, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. If doing a marriage coverture the way Brian did, because I did it the way Brian instructed me to do it, if that's not the proper way to get married, what does that say about Brother Brian? Okay. Brother says Christ, Brother Brian what is married. Okay, I'm not saying he's not. But I'm saying according to his own standards, if I wasn't married and I'm just fornicating, what has he been doing all these years? Brothers and sisters in Christ, by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Now I want to make something very clear. I was wrong in that situation. You know, want me to say it again? I'll say it again, Brother Seth. I'm not too prideful like someone we know. I was wrong in that situation. I married a false convert. 
I've got a study of uh, our video up here says my apologies and warning to the single brethren and I go through that and I talk about how I screwed up I was wrong okay I failed the Lord I failed the brethren I failed brother Brian I failed brother JT I failed miserably. You say, how did you fail Brother Brian? Okay. Uh, my ex-wife, she went and did videos and she gave ammunition to the lost world to attack Brother Brian and King James Video Ministries when I'm the one that failed. I'm the one that made the mistake. I married a lost woman and the marriage fell apart. Okay. I failed the Lord. I didn't fail the Lord through fornication. He lied. Brother Brian just lied about a brother in Christ. We'll get into that. Okay? But first I want to stay on me. I failed the Lord. I failed Brother Brian because then the enemy started attacking Brother Brian through my failure. Okay? Why well, say I failed Brother JT? At the time, Brother JT was trying to get out his book, uh, The Lord of Glory. And I said I would help him with uh, grammar and... Um, spell check and stuff like that. I said I'd help him with that. Then I left him hanging. I blew him off because of what I was going through. That still doesn't justify blowing off a brother in Christ. I blew him off. And I had to sit there and earnestly apologize to Brother JT. I'm sorry. And I explained what I was going through. Brother JT is like, wow, I had no clue. I was mad at you and he's justifiably mad at me. I just, I had no clue what you were going through, but that still, if you, I, I doubt he watches these, but if you are watching this, Brother JT, to this day, I'm still sorry for blowing you off and failing you and that whole situation that happened, okay? okay? I said back then, and I'll say it again, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that mistake. I'm sorry for, to the Lord first and foremost. Repent, forsake, and get, all, get your heart right with the Lord and get back to living for the Lord. I'm sorry, okay, to the brethren, because why am I sorry to the brethren? Because of that situation, I had to step down from the ministry. I wasn't qualified to be a preacher, teacher, bishop, anything. I wasn't qualified. I had to step down from the ministry. I failed the brethren, right? So I want to say I am sorry. But Brother Brian saying, well, it's just, you know, it's, he, was, he was just fornicating woman and wasn't married. Before I got married, I sought Brother Brian's counsel through emails. I asked his advice on how to get married. We did a marriage coacher. We did, me and my ex-wife, we did not, the Bible's word is, know each other until after we had done the marriage coverture and had the two witnesses sign it. We gave our vows. We are married. Okay? We were married. Even according, back then, even according to Brother Brian, we were married. He's only coming out and saying that now. Why? A character assassination. Damage control. Damage control. Okay? He's crossed the line. He just bared false witness. Deuteronomy 19.15, we read, Deuteronomy 19.15, we read, One witness shall not rise up against a man for an iniquity or for any sin in any sin that he sinneth. Brian was never a witness here to what was going on. Like I said, it's 100% my fault. But one of the things I did not do is I was not fornicating with some woman. I was married according to the scriptures. Okay. At the mouth of two witnesses, or at the mouth of three witnesses, shall matters be established. You say, well, that's just the Old Testament. Well, turn to Matthew chapter 18, 16. It's still the Old Testament, but here's Jesus saying it again, for instruction and righteousness. Remember, things that are written before time are written for our learning. For instruction and righteousness. Matthew 18, 16. But if but if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. I had two witnesses that witnessed the marriage. 
Okay, once again, I got married the way Brother Brian got married. If it doesn't count and, it, and it's not real marriage and I was just fornicating, what does that say about Brother Brian? Think before you speak. Think before you speak. Okay. Um, the comment Brother Brian made under Apologies to the Brethren. Okay. When I made that video at that time, in that video I'm saying it's my wife and now it's my ex-wife. She committed adultery. Okay, I had to give her a writ of divorce according to the scriptures. Okay. I went through a nightmare, brothers and sisters of Christ. A complete nightmare. And it was all my fault. I had so many mistakes that I made that day. And that time period. Not just that day, that time period. I made lots of mistakes, brothers and sisters of Christ. Lots of mistakes. Fornication wasn't one of them. What's Brian doing? He's trying to tear someone else's character down. And I'm getting ahead of myself. That's what the enemy does. When the enemy can't handle this right here, brother, sisters, Christ, you know what the enemy did? Like Brother Brian, he would preach absolute truth back in the day. He preached absolute truth. This was his final authority in all matters of faith and practice. You know what the enemy would do when they couldn't, they had no foundation, scriptural foundation, for easy believism, for poster mid-trib, for Trinity versus the Godhead, for their pagan Trinity God. They had no scriptural bounds. So what did they resort to? Character assassination. They would start attacking Brother Brian personally. They'd hold past sins against him that he had repented, forsaked, and got back to his heart right with the Lord. And then they would lie about him. Lie about him. Slander him. But the Bible word is they would bear false witness. Okay. So I'm talking in this study and I'm apologizing and explaining through the scriptures how don't make this mistake. They, and I'll tell you again, the warning again, brothers and Christ, when it, you're single brethren out there, Brother and sister Christ, when you go to get married to a man, sisters in Christ, or to a woman, brother, brothers in Christ, you make sure that she is truly saved and born again by the life that she's living. It's not just words, but her deeds. I went off just words, and I compromised, and my life fell apart. The ministry fell apart. I had to step down from ministry. But brother and sister, I didn't fornicate. Brian just lied. Right. Let me read this comment real quick. It says, Thank you for putting this out there for the single brethren. I know it's hard to talk about what happened. Brother says, talk there. I was emailing him before the marriage, during the marriage, and after the marriage. He knows what I went through. And you know who... I'm, getting, I'm not getting ahead of myself, but you know who got me through all that? Brother Brian got me through that. I, I, at the time, I think I was talking to some other brethren that got me through it. I talked to Brother JT a little bit after that, after everything, and explained a little bit more detail what what happened. But he helped get me through it with encouraging me to stick with the Word of God and continue to living for the Lord. Okay. I know it's hard to talk about what happened because I explained to Brother Brian what happened in more detail than this video. Okay. But we all have to hold on to the standards of Scripture. This is back when Brian was in a standing position. This is the man that, say, that led me to Christ. That taught me the Bible version issue. Taught me how to study the Bible. This is the man that was in a standing position. Brian that's in a standing position. Okay, hold on to the standards of Scripture when judging anyone out there. If and when we compromise... Hello? When it came to this, it was me. It will always end in failure. Absolutely. I have seen many friends in the ministry turn out to be false after I gave them my support while knowing that they were being worldly and living in sin. May the Lord bless you, Brother Philip. Why did he say it like that? Because I talked with him and said, I'm stepping down from the ministry. And he's like, yes, you should step down from the ministry. You're not qualified. Okay? There's a lot of... Well, that's what he's talking about. I had to step down from the ministry because I wasn't qualified. And there's a lot of men out there that would have just continued in the ministry even though they were living in sin. 
the, the house wasn't, my house wasn't in order. Okay, like I said, do you want to know? Watch the study if you want to go into depth of what was going on. My house was not a Bible-believing, God-fearing home anymore. There was a lot of sin in my house. But I was married. I wasn't fornicating, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay? Now, I was wrong. Okay? And I want to point down, I stepped down from the ministry, 1 Timothy 3, when it came to qualifications for a bishop. I didn't qualify as a bishop. I had to step down from the ministry. And I did. My house wasn't in order. Okay? We're gonna get, when we get into the bishop thing again, uh, it's, those standards are present tense. You've got a present tense be, uh, um, fulfill all those standards to be a bishop. If a man desire the office of a bishop, 1 Timothy 3. Present tense, not past tense, not future tense. Well, I'll get that cleaned up in the future. No, present tense. Exodus 20, Exodus 20, verse 16. Brian, Brother Jesus Christ, Brian in his pride and his anger and his bitterness and his hate, he just did what the enemy did to him. He just did it to a brother in Christ. He just bared false witness and he just slandered and stabbed a brother in Christ in the back. Why? Because if he can make me look bad and attack my character, then maybe they won't listen to this right here when I'm reading it. And that's what the enemy did to Brother Brian. Uh, the Edward P.S. Okay, the um, uh, King's Table, the Deborah Gills, all of them. They, they, they resort to worldly tactics because they can't deal with the scriptures, so they'll try to do a character assassination and destroy your character and tell your character down to make them look good. It's not about this. It becomes all about this. All over Christmas. All over Christmas. Brian's lowercase g God. Right. Now, I, when I was wrong, I, did, I stepped down from the ministry. 1 Timothy 3, okay? Exodus 20, 16. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priest and the judges, which shall be in those days. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition, and behold, if the witness be a false witness, and hath testified falsely against his brother, then shall ye do unto him as he had thought to do, that to have done unto his brother. I want to stop right there. Brothers and Christ, Brian was, try, was, was, I guess his goal was to discredit me. Brothers and Christ, I went through a nightmare with my mistake. I've fallen flat on my face. I went through something that I don't wish on any of the other brothers and sisters in Christ. And never in a million years, <laughs> they always say a million years, but we haven't been here. 6,000 years, never in a 6,000 years would I wish that on a brother or sister in Christ. And Brian knows what I went through. He, he wasn't just ignorant or innocent when he made that statement. He purposely made that statement to tear my character down. And all he did was condemn himself and shown his pride, his anger, his bitterness, his hate, that he would slander a brother in Christ and stab him in the back. When I disagree with Brother Brian and say, hey, he lied about this here, and he's deceiving about this right here, that's not an attack on him, that's correcting him. He wants to do a study correcting me, telling him, oh, he's lying here, or he's... He's messing up the scriptures here, and he tried to deceive the brethren here. By all means. Brother, I think he has already mentioned me several times when it comes to Christmas, our disagreement on Christmas, and how it applies to liberty. But I never would have stooped as low as he just did. I would never, ever have stooped as low as he just did. Brother, sister, Christ, to lie and slander a brother in Christ, to bear 
false witness and personally attack and try to tear someone's character down so that nobody will listen to him and everybody will listen to them. Brian's doing it so everybody won't listen to Brother Philip. Everybody will listen to Brother Brian. Notice I still say Brother Brian. Through all this that he did, that video and that talk and everything, the way he's treated me through this whole situation, he's still a brother in Christ. I will not, I repeat, I will not play Satan's game. I will not, I mean the first temptation that came in when he said that and stabbed me in the back, you know the first temptation, well there's all these things you can say about him and, and you can say this about him and you can say that about him. No, I'm going to do things God's way. It's about the scriptures. Thus saith the Lord. It's not about character assassinations. Okay? But he just showed his true colors, brother and sister Christ, how prideful he's gotten. How hateful he is. Bitter. When I heard him say that statement, brother and sister Christ, I, my mouth just dropped. Because he knows better. He knows better than to lie like that. Brethren, in the past, people were lying about him like that, left and right. He knows how it feels. Why would he do that to somebody else? Because he has fallen so far to the point, and he's gotten so prideful, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. So shalt thou put the evil away from among you. I'm done with Brother Brian. And those which remain shall hear and fear and shall henceforth commit no more any such evil among you. But Jesus Christ, do you really want to become like Brother Brian? So very prideful, having such anger and hate, not righteous anger, anger. And like we did that study, Brother Jesus Christ, when you hold on to anger and you don't give it to the Lord, what happens to anger? It starts festering and turning it into bitterness. And that bitterness turns into hate. The enemies of the ministry are attacking you. Praise the Lord. Give them to the Lord and say, praise the Lord that I be counted worthy. No, we can't praise the Lord. I got to get angry. I got to get bitter. I got to get hateful. I got to mock them. I got to put them down. I got to mouth off to them, also known as sarcasm. I got to call them names. And so on and so forth. 1 Corinthians 5.11 But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be I had to highlight that. Be. Why is that? Because when it uses the word be the way this English, the way English is this is present tense. This isn't past tense. This isn't you trying to predict the future. I think he will become a fornicator someday so I'm going to break fellowship with him. It says, if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, present tense. Brother, sister Christ, I was never, I was a, I'm sorry, I can't say I was never a fornicator. In my lost life, I was a fornicator. When I was newly saved, God was working on me. When I got married, I wasn't a fornicator. But once again, he's going to grab some, a huge mistake that I made in my past, and he's going to try to hang me with it. And I'm getting ahead of myself again. That's what the lost world loves to do. That's what the enemies of King James Video Ministries used to do. They tried to take Brian's mistakes and his sins, and they kept trying to hang him with it. And you tell him, uh, he repented on that, got his heart right with the Lord, and he's living for the Lord now. He's not making that mistake again. I don't care. We're still going to hang him with it. This says present tense, be a fornicator. Present tense, be covetous. I'm going to keep using the week because that's how, the, it, that's how English works. When you start doing commas, it's be a fornicator. Be covetousness. Remember what the Bible says? Covetousness, which is idolatry. When you covet something to the point where you don't care about the brethren, you don't care about God's word, that thing that you're coveting, becomes a lowercase g God. It becomes idolatry. If any of you be an idol idolater, this is talking present tense, brothers and sisters of Christ, not past tense, present tense. Right now, present tense, I'm not a fornicator. 
I wasn't when I was married to my wife, but was I a fornicator in my past? Absolutely. I'm saved now. God has changed my life. He's got that out of my life. He's cleaned up my life. Okay. This says present tense. You can look at my uh, testimony video. God saved a wretched man like me. I was the chiefest of sinners. I was. Any man be an idolater. If any man be a railer. Or be a drunkard. Or be an extortioner. With such a one know not eat. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without God judgeth. Therefore, put away from among yourself that wicked person. We see it in the Old Testament. We see, see it in the New Testament. You give them to the Lord, and the Lord will judge. If Brian's truly given me to the Lord, he just puts me without and says, I'll let God deal with them. He doesn't have to resort and, and stoop so low as to slander and backstab a brother in Christ. And anytime someone disagrees with Brian lately and tells him and corrects him and says he's wrong... He always tries to use the word, they're attacking me. I'm not attacking them, brother and sister Christ, and neither are you. You're correcting them through the, through the scriptures. Something he can't handle, so he's resorting to lost world tactics. Slander. Lying. Okay. Mark 14, 56. For many bear false witness against him, Jesus Christ, but their witness agreed not together. And there arose certain and bare false witness against him, saying, and then they just said all these false witness stuff. Brothers, sisters in Christ, Brian's doing to me what happened to Jesus Christ. And as hard as it is for me to do it, praise the Lord. And it's not easy. Praise the Lord that I'm counted worthy to suffer for his name's sake and for his word. This is all happening because I'm standing for God's word. And we're going to count the cost here in a bit. Okay. But Brian bared false witness. He crossed the line. He slandered me and lied. And he intentionally, intentionally lied. Okay. Intentionally lied. There's no accident. Okay. And as you remember the statement, we, we did the video, what Brother Brian said there, he went back to Christmas because that's where our disagree, main disagreement is. It's not where it's going to stop. And we're going to talk, I'm going to talk about the things I disagree with Brother Brian again. And I'm going to say why I can't follow him anymore. I'm done with Brother Brian. Uh, King James Video Ministries is no more. It is now Born Again Barbarian. And I can't support Born Again Barbarian Ministries. I can't. God's, uh, Brian's not going the Bible way. He's going the world's way. He wants to go there. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. He says, anyone can disagree with me on Christmas. Remember, he brought it up. Anyone can disagree with me on Chris, the, the Christmas thing. That's a lie. Just want to let you brothers know, yes, I'm not attacking him. I'm stating a fact. He is lying. What he's really saying is, is, you have to believe, as I believe, that Christmas is neutral, it's neither bad nor good, and that we have a choice to whether we want to keep it or not keep it. You have to believe that. And if you don't, look how, he's treat people, how he'll treat you. He lies. Anyone can disagree with me on Christmas. Then why is there such contention between Brother Brian and me? If anyone can disagree with me on any uh, on the Christmas thing, no, we can't. Because if we do the Bible study like I have and put out all the Bible studies like I have, proving that it's pagan, it's satanic, it's wit, it's idolatry, and with Brother Brian, it's not just idolatry; it's covetousness. Which what is covetousness? It's also idolatry. He would choose covetousness and idolatry over the brethren, over a brother in Christ. And treat a brother in Christ like what he just did there and lied. To put me down. To get me to remember what I went through. It was a nightmare, brother says Christ. It was a nightmare. 
And like I said, I'm not playing the innocent victim and it's her and get all prideful and, and angry and bitterness and hateful. I was 100% at fault in that situation. I failed the Lord. I failed the brethren. I failed Brother Brian. I failed Brother JT. I failed. But he's trying to do a character assassination by lying and bearing false witness. Okay? He knows what I went through and he just stabbed me in the back. Just utterly stabbed me in the back. Tried to attack me personally. I haven't attacked him personally. I haven't attacked his wife or his son like the enemy has. I've kept it strictly about the word of God. And I'll, I'll get to it here in a bit, but I'm not angry at Brother Brian. I'll tell you what I'm really angry at. So that's a lie. When he says anyone can disagree with me on Christmas thing, he's lying. He's just flat out lying. And he brought up liberty. It's a liberty issue. And here's the thing. He says, I don't care what anyone says. You know what that statement is made by? Someone who's very prideful. I don't care what anybody says. Okay? So what if an elder comes to you with the scriptures to say, elders in the church and the scriptures to say, hey, uh, you're wrong. You're trying to add something to liberty that doesn't belong to liberty. You're trying to justify sin under liberty. Liberty is what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. It always goes back to what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. But I'm not going to get into it. I've got plenty of studies on what true liberty is. And Brian hasn't refuted any of them. Okay? But is he going to respond to the elders? I don't care what anyone says. Yes, he will. He actually believes that. I don't care what anybody says. So if the elders in the church come to correct you, when it comes to this being God's perfect written word, I don't care what anybody else says. That's a good statement to make. But when it comes to a brother in Christ coming to you to correct you on something in the Scriptures, where you're starting to be in error, are you supposed to have the attitude, I don't care what anybody says? No, that's a prideful attitude. That's pride speaking. Okay, what about other men in ministry that go to correct them? I don't care what anybody says. What about you, brothers and sisters of Christ, when you go to correct them? I don't care what anybody else says. And he doesn't. I don't ever want to become like that. I'm going to stand, stand, stand for absolute truth. But when I have a brother in Christ that I know is a brother in Christ, there's lots of brethren that are brethren, elders, men in ministry, that have tried to confront Brother Brian on the Christmas issue. When I know that I have a brother in Christ that loves me, that's trying to correct me according to scriptures, I'm not going to have that attitude, I don't care what anyone says. I'll sit down and talk with them. I'll sit down and talk with them, brothers and sisters of Christ. But his biggest thing, I don't care what anybody says. That's the brother Brian of today. You either go his way and do his thing and do it his way, not God's way, his way, or be gone. Well, since you're not doing it God's way, be gone. Goodbye. Okay? You're not following the scriptures. Okay. Now it says, uh, I was gonna, Philip was going to delete his channel. I might have. Brother says Christ, I got so low. I just felt like such a failure. I, with that situation, I felt like such a complete failure. I don't remember if I actually said I was going to delete my channel. I hold, told him to do some videos told him to do some videos, take it easy, you do not qualify as a pastor. Well, if I don't qualify as a pastor, then I don't do any videos. See how that doesn't make sense? He never told me that. Like I said, he, said, he agreed with me when I stepped down from the ministry and said I didn't qualify, but then I talked to him after it was all said and done, uh, almost a year later, and said, listen, it's been a long time, I got my heart right with the Lord, I got this house back to being a Bible-believing, God-fearing home. Um... I really want to get back into ministry. I really want to get back into serving the Lord again. And he, he did say, take it slow. And I did. I did short videos and only did like, you know, two or three videos a month for the first few months. I took it slow. Okay? But he never said I didn't qualify to preach and teach. He said that back when I was in error. But he supported me getting back in the ministry and the comments he's made under my videos. That's a good teaching. I didn't know that. Thank you for that. 
type comments on a few of my videos. After all this happened. So why is he acting the way he is now? Damage control. Damage control. Instead of dealing with this, he's going to attack this. So, after he broke fellowship with me, now he's doing all these attacks and saying all these things about me. He didn't say them about me before when we were, we've had fellowship, before the breaking of the fellowship. So why is he saying it now afterwards? Okay. I do not qualify under 1 Timothy 3 if a man desire the office of a bishop. Well, the same could be said about Brother Brian today. Not when he made this comment. That was a brother in Christ. Praise the Lord that's still in a standing position. And like I said, he helped me get through that situation. That's why I want you to know, this isn't being, I'm not doing this out of hate. I'm not doing this out of vengeance. Brother Brian helped me out a lot. He got me through some tough times. This isn't easy, brother, says Christ. But he's turned on the brethren and started acting like the lost world by slandering brothers in Christ, backbiting and whispering that the Bible condemns, he's become a part of that. Right. But I just want to make that a point. Not the past, Brother Brian. I'm saying present tense, Brother Brian, doesn't qualify for 1 Timothy 3 either. He's saying I don't, but I'm saying he doesn't. And I'm using this as evidence. When you bear false witness against a brother in Christ, that you will lie about him, that you will slander him, that you will stoop to the lost world's level of, how to, of attacking people, you're not qualified for 1 Timothy. Why? Because the Bible says 1 Timothy, a bishop must be blameless. Present tense, not past tense. And i got to make this point. Blameless doesn't equal sinless. Because if it did, nobody would be qualified. Nobody would be qualified to be a bishop. Okay, once again, Paul corrects Peter. It wasn't a culture thing. Peter was going back under the old Levitical laws and he was treating the Gentiles that he just led to Christ as if they were lost. Why? Because they weren't circumcised and they weren't keeping the laws of Moses. And Peter got in his, uh, Paul got into Peter's face. It was so grievous and so wrong that Paul got in his face and rebuked him before all and said, how are you going to expect them to live as you do when you don't even live that way? You don't even keep the law in order to be saved. Circumcision isn't what you do to be saved. And Peter beforehand had to have a vision. God gave him that vision to go preach to the Gentiles. And he's the one that said, how are we supposed to put a yoke, a bondage on them that even our fathers weren't able to bear? Paul corrects Peter to his face. He was to be blamed. Peter repented, or Peter, Peter repented. I'm make sure I'm using Peter versus Paul. I get them mixed up. Peter repented. He could still, he could still do the office of a bishop. He was an apostle, though. He was in a, a certain office, but he could still qualify for a bishop. He repented, got his heart right with the Lord, and got back to doing what's right. He stopped treating those Gentiles as if they're lost every time the Jews showed up and withdrew himself. Yeah, culture had nothing to do with it. That's why it was so serious that Paul had to rebuke him before all. He had to be re rebuked to his face. Okay. Now notice in that whole statement, that question that God asked in that whole statement, Brian didn't use any scripture. What was the question again? How to deal with betrayal and slander. I'm going to tell you, Brother Chris, how am I going to deal with Brother Brian for that, for that slander and backstabbing betrayal that he just did? He knows what I went through. He knows the truth that I was married, not fornicating. I got married the same way he did. So what does the Bible say? How do you deal with betrayal and slander, brothers and sisters in Christ? Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. I'm not playing Satan's game. I'm not going to make videos 
attacking Brother Brian personally and trying to tear down his character so people won't listen to him and listen to me. I'm not playing Satan's game. Do good to them that hate you. You don't reward evil with evil. You overcome evil with good. I won't play Satan's game. There's people in the comment section that are just poking Brother Brian, trying to get him to fight and fight and fight. And there's people in the comment section that tried to poke me and get me to turn on Brother Brian and fight. And I kept correcting him and said, I'm showing where he's wrong in the scriptures. I'm not going to attack him personally. I'm not going to do it. This isn't a vendetta thing. This isn't a vengeful thing. This isn't a hate thing, an anger thing, or a pride thing. This is out of love, correcting him through the scriptures out of love. It says, do good to them that hate you. Brother Brian's shown nothing but hate towards a brother in Christ. What do you do when someone does that? You do good to him. I'm not going to stoop to his level. And pray for them which despitefully use you. All this is coming out now, but it didn't come out before. And persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Remember when we see this perfect, it's not talking about sinless perfection. It's talking about having a perfect heart with God. Your perfect desire to please God and do things God's way. And He's showing you this is God's way. So therefore be perfect. Your heart and your desire should be to do this. This is how you respond to Him. Romans 12.9 Turn to Romans 12.9 let love be without dissimulation. Fake. I love Brother Brian. That's why I'm not going after and attacking him personally. I'm correcting him with love through the scriptures and he doesn't want anything to do with it. At this point, because of what he did there, I'm done with Brother Brian. And I know his pride and his arrogance, he don't care. I don't care. He doesn't. I don't care what anybody says. He doesn't. Let love be without dissimulation, not fake. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. What Brother Brian just did there, that's not good. That's evil. Cleave to that which is good. Okay. Abhor that which is evil, brothers and sisters Christ. Be kindly affectioned one towards another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. I want my brother back. I want the brother Brian back that got me through that hard time there that now he's trying to use against me. I want my brother back. This brother Brian that's fallen flat on his face that has nothing but pride. He's got, I'm going to say, it's his pride is so puffed up that if he stepped one foot into Oregon, there's no room for anybody else here. That's how prideful Brian's gotten. To go and do this? He used to attack, I'm sorry, Brother Spray, he used to attack the lost world when they did this. He taught me that the re when, when people can't handle the scriptures and stick with the scriptures, they will resort to f attacking your character and personally attacking you. That's what they're going to resort to. That's what the enemy does. And that's what Brian's doing. He's acting like the enemy. He's acting like the world. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Okay. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, patient. How would you do, how do you, uh, what was it, how do you deal with betrayal and slander? Being patient. There's one right there, rejoicing in hope. I won't be here for that much longer. Jesus has come back any day. Brian can't do that anymore because he doesn't believe that. I have hope. I look to Jesus Christ every day. He's coming back any day now and keeping my eyes on Jesus Christ, not the world. 
It's one of those things that if you don't believe that Jesus Christ could come back tomorrow, then you're not looking for Jesus Christ. So if you're not looking for Jesus Christ, what are you looking for? Something to think about, brothers and sisters of Christ. Rejoice in hope, patient in tribulations, them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Okay. Lord, I give them to you. I give Brother Brian to you. Lord, please, please get him back on the right path. Please watch over him, Lord. Please take care of him, Lord. Blessing. Get him back on the right path, Lord. That's always been my prayer. And I've always promoted that among the brethren. I've never once started attacking Brother Brian personally and telling brethren that they need to stay away from... Um, it's not King James Video Ministries anymore, but... Um, Born Again Barbarian Ministries, if you want to say it like that. Born Again Barbarian Ministries. Um, I've never told people to stay away from that or nothing. I'm not cursing Brother Brian. But why is he doing it to me? Verse 15. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Brother Jesus Christ, with Brother, with Brother Brian's, though our, we had our differences... Brother Brian and I, uh, when it comes to Christmas, and as it, and Christmas as it applies to liberty, and now uh, him taking his helmet off for a hope of salvation. Okay, um, when his father died, I, I gave my condolences. Okay, rejoice with them that rejoice and weep with them that weep. You still do good. We just did a Bible study recently on how to, how to deal, I should have said deal, but it was react. How to react to the lost world, okay, when they reject the, the gospel and they start attacking you and treating you bad, how are you supposed to deal with them? That's the Bible word. Now you start using the Bible word, okay? You do good to them that hate you, okay? Verse 16, be of the same mind one towards another. I keep pushing this, brothers and sisters. Be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not high things, but consent to men of low estate. Some men get so puffed up and so prideful that they think they're some great one. Okay, you're not to con condes uh, uh, mind not high things, but consent to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Brother Brian probably thought he was very wise when he was saying, making that comment and lying about a brother in Christ and stabbing him in the back. Be not wise in your own conceit. Don't make the mistake Brother Brian's making, Brother Sis Christ. I'm talking to you now. Brother Brian, he's gone. He needs to drop his pride. I'll stop right here. You can't talk to Brother Brian about anything. I can't even talk to him about what he did here. Why? Because all because of his pride being so great, the only thing you can talk to Brother Brian about is his pride. Until he drops his pride, you can't talk to him about anything. Especially what he just did. You can't. Be not wise in your own conceits. This is for you, Brother Strath. Don't make the same mistake. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Remember we said up there? What was his actual answer? When someone betrays you and slanders you, how do you react? Well, his reaction was, I'm going to betray a brother in Christ and slander a brother in Christ. Reward evil for evil. Provide things honest. I have to emphasize that word, honest, because Brian lied. Provide things that are honest in the sight of all men. All men, not just brethren, all men. If it be possible, as much lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. All men. Okay? I disagree with Brother Brian. But you know how you really start a war? By attacking someone personally. Or attacking their family members. A man's wife or a man's son like the enemy does. That's how you start a war. Why is Brother Brian acting that way? Trying to start a war. I'm not playing Satan's game. Brian wants to play Satan's game, he can go for it. I'm not playing Satan's game. 
If it be possible, let's slide to you, live peace be upon all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. I don't want vengeance on Brother Brian. I want God to get him back up on his feet, get him back into that standing point, back to believing in the imminent return of Jesus Christ with the life that he lives every day, back to, be, to his first love, back to the ministry being a life calling, not some job that's an income, but it's a life calling and he loves the ministry, he loves the brethren and he loves preaching, comparing scripture with scripture with scripture with scripture. I don't want vengeance on him. I want. I pray that the Lord gets him back on his feet. That his priorities will be God first. The brethren second, including his wife. She's part of the brothers and sisters in Christ. Not the world. Not traditions of men. Verse 20, Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. How, how, how do you deal with it? I reward evil with good. They can be, Brian can be as evil as he wants with me. I'm not going to reward evil for evil. I just can't support um, born-again barbarian anymore. Brian's going in a direction that's not the Bible direction. He's going the way of the world, and I cannot follow him. Why? Because I don't want to end up like him. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Brothers and Christ, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. You know what I'm really angry about? Yes, I'm frustrated at Brother Brian, and I'm very disappointed in Brother Brian and what he did there and lying. But you know, I'm getting ahead of myself again. But you know what I'm really angry about, Brother and Christ? I'm angry at the falling away. I get fearful. You know what I'm so scared of, brother and sister of Christ? I used to say that Brian was the best of us when he was in a standing position, when he helped me out, that comment that I read, and he helped me through my own mistake and falling flat on my face and helping me. The Lord used him to pick me back up along with some of the other brethren. You know what the, I, I get so scared about, brother and sister Christ? If Brother Brian can become part of the falling away, he was the best of us. If he can become part of the falling away, if he can start acting like this and getting so prideful and so puffed up and start turning his back on the, uh, the imminent return of Jesus Christ, putting on your helmet of a hope of salvation, living like Jesus Christ can come back any day, if he can start turning his back on this book and he can become part of the falling away, any of us can become part of it. It can happen to any of us. That's why the Bible says, Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil go around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. If we don't say sober, and we don't say vigilant, spiritually sober, vigilant, it can happen to any of us. I do not want to end up like where Brian is right now. Falling flat on his face, turning his back on the Word of God. He's become a Pharisee, he's become a scribe, and he's become a Sadducee in his actions. He's turned his back. He's not living for Jesus Christ every day as if he could come back tomorrow. Because he doesn't believe that. Oh, he's not coming back for another five or ten years. So he's not looking for Jesus Christ to come back. What is he looking for? He's looking for the mark of the beast system. He's looking for the one world order. He's looking for that man of sin, the son of perdition. But he's not looking for Jesus Christ. I'm scared, brothers and Christ, because if it can happen to him, it can happen to any of us. And at the very end, I was going to talk about this. The last step in the falling away is what? I mean, it's falling away. The last step before the catching away of the body of Christ is what? The falling away. Brethren who are truly saved, born again, who have stood for absolute truth, are falling away. We're in the last days, brothers and sisters in Christ. Acts 5.40 And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beat them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. 
And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. How do you deal with betrayal and, and slander? Well, if, if you're in the right, like you're, you're obeying the word of God, and this is what you're standing for like I am, and you're being betrayed and slandered, to God be the glory. Praise the Lord that I'm counted worthy to suffer for his name's sake and for his word. Praise the Lord. Verse 42, And daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. The ministry goes on. Brian's going a direction I can't go. The ministry goes on. God will deal with Brother Brian. I believe he's saved and I believe in the Bible when it talks about chastening of the Lord and God will chasten his children because he loves his children to get him back on the right path. God will deal with Brother Brian. I'm done. I've tried to help him. He's so prideful. He's so arrogant. I, I'm frustrated that he would stoop so low as to lie and slander a brother in Christ and do to a brother in Christ what the enemies of King James Video Ministries did to, brother, to him, Brother Brian. That he would resort to acting like Edward P.F. and King's Table and that whole group of them. That offends him good, because maybe that'll wake him up for what he did. Romans 8, 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed into it, in us, shall be the catching away of the body of Christ. How do you deal with it? I can deal with it because I'm looking for that blessed hope every day. I'm looking for that blessed hope every day. The Bible says in this present world, looking for that blessed hope that he might redeem us, that we might be, I'm sorry, that we might be redeemed, might be. It could happen in our lifetime. It could happen in Paul's lifetime. It could happen. That's how we're supposed to live. Did it happen in Paul's lifetime? No. But brothers and sisters of Christ, I keep thinking, how do you deal with that? How do you deal when someone stabs you in the back, betrays you, and slanders you? That's a brother in Christ. Someone who once said, called you friend and loved and said, I love you, brother. And then they're doing this. How do you deal with it? It... I look to that blessed hope. We're going to go home someday. I'm going to have to stand at the judgment seat of Christ and answer. And Brother Brian's going to have to stand at the judgment seat of Christ and answer for what he's done. And when we get up there, we'll all be of one mind. I won't be up there hating my brother in Christ, Brother Brian. We'll be of one mind, of the same mind, of the same judgment. We'll be working together. The love will be there. It's not here, but the love will be there. Okay. It's getting warm in here. Got the heater on. But how do you get through it? Do you think about the catching away of the body of Christ? What it's like going to be like in heaven? Everybody with the same mind and the same judgment? There's only truly saved brethren. No more false converts. No more fakes and frauds. No more division among the body of Christ. Yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9. I wrote unto you an epistle not to company with fornicators. Okay, we did this first. But yet altogether with fornicators of this world, or with the cov covetous, with the extortioners, with the idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. We go out of the world. We're not supposed to be idolaters and covetousness to the point where it becomes idolatry. Okay, we're not supposed to be fornicators. Be, present tense. We talked about that. Be, present, present tense. But now I've written unto you not to keep company. If any man that be called a brother be, be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or extortioner, with such a one know not eat. For what have we to judge them that are without? Do ye not judge them that are within? But them that are without God judges. Therefore put away from among yourself that wicked person. How would I deal with somebody that's betrayed me and slandered me? You put them without you put him without. I'm done with Brother Brian. Put him without, God will deal with him. I'm not going to harbor anger. I'm not going to harbor hatred, um, bitterness. I'm not going to get prideful. Give him to the Lord. God will judge him. God will take care of him. 
1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You say, why do you read that? Because when someone tries to grab what the enemy loves to do and what brethren fall into the trap of doing, because he's a bro Brian's a brother in Christ, is they love to hold past sins, past mistakes, and to try to hang you with it. Didn't you repent? Didn't you make a video apologizing to the brethren and repent and get your heart right with the Lord and get back on back on to serving the Lord? Well, yeah. So what does the lost world do? What do the enemies of the true word of the King James Bible, even if they claim to be Bible believing, you still have enemies of the King James Bible who lie and, and claim to be Bible believing. How do they attack people and tear down their character? They will lie, they will stab you in the back, they will slander you, and they'll lie about you, but they also, what they love to do is when you fail the Lord, and I have failed the Lord plenty of times since I got saved, been saved almost eight years now, I have failed the Lord plenty of times. And what they like to do is they like to use your past sins against you, that you repented, forsaken, and got your heart right with the Lord again. I want to remind again, when that situation happened with my ex-wife, I stepped down from the ministry. I stepped down from the ministry. Okay. Okay, Paul killed Christians, women, children, and even condemned Stephen's condemned Stephen to be stoned. Okay. Does that mean that Paul doesn't qualify? Because we're going to hold those sins against him. God's faithful to forgive. Now, I understand Paul was lost at this time before he got saved, but they still like to. The lost world will even hold your sins that you had before you even got saved against you. But they love to use the sins and the mistakes that you make, and they like to hang you with it. Why is a brother in Christ acting like the lost world? Okay, what about when Paul corrected Peter? We already talked about uh, Peter, okay? He was not blameless. He was to blame. He wasn't blameless. So because of that sin, he's not allowed to preach anymore, right? Because we hold people's sins in their past against them for the rest of their lives. The Bible says, you know, we said there that he's faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then you read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. It says, And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. When I say I'm done with Brother Brian, I'm done with him. In the future, because I know God will deal with him and try to get him back on the right path. Okay. And my fear for any brother in Christ, not just Brother Brian, my fear for myself, for you, Brother Sister Christ, if you get so prideful that you start hardening your heart, just read Moses and uh, the story about Moses and Pharaoh and what God did to get Pharaoh to obey the word, his word. What God is willing to do to break that pride and to bring you to your knees. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It actually means fear. Do you fear God? Where's the fear of God in what Brian just did? It's not there. I would never attack and slander a brother in Christ the way he just did me and, and stab me in the back. I disagree with him in the scriptures. I show where he's lying in the script. When he lied about the scriptures, I showed, and that's me correcting him, and I showed where he was dishonest and was trying to deceive people through the scriptures, uh, 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 corrupting the scriptures and not uh, doing 2 Timothy 2.15. He wasn't rightly dividing. He was adding to God's word and subtracting from God's word. Okay, But that wasn't me attacking him. That was me correcting him. And that wasn't me attacking him personally. That's me stating facts. If he wants to say, I lied about this, or I, I'm deceiving about that, when our disagreement, and he's doing a Bible study and showing it in the Bible, that's one thing. But saying I was, a for, I was fornicating, and I wasn't married when I was married, and holding something in my past that I have repented on, 
and forsaking and gotten my heart back right with the Lord? That's not the same thing, brothers and sisters of Christ. It's not the same thing. Brian's dealing with this differently than me. Right? He's not sticking to the Scriptures and proving where I'm wrong, where we disagree and I'm wrong, that broke our fellowship. He's not dealing with the Scriptures. He's now trying to do character assassinations. Attack me personally and tear me down personally. Like I said, damage control. Ephesians 4.32 Ephesians 4.32 I already read that one. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, forgiven you. I would forgive Brother Brian in a heartbeat. If he came to me truly repentant and said, you know what, that opened my eyes. I can't believe I just said that, and I can't believe I did that. Brother, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. I'd forgive give him in a heartbeat. Because that's what we're supposed to do. That's what we're supposed to do, Brother Jesus Christ. How, would you, how do you deal with people that stab you in the back and, and, and slander you? How would you deal with someone who did that and, and, and repented and asked for your forgiveness? You forgive them. You forgive them. Now, one thing I want to throw in here, brethren who know me and have gone through uh, and been with me since the very beginning, which was it's not that long ago. It's I looked, I was like four years ago. Like I said, I've been saved eight years now, and I've only been in ministry for four years. I didn't get into ministry right away. I took time for sanctification. I even talked about that in my testimony, how I fought God for two years on getting certain things out of my life, addictions. And I spent the first, four, uh, the first two years hardcore studying, and then the other two years going back over everything over and over, and just studying the Word of God. Okay, so those who know me, he, Brother Brian, you trust Brother Brian. Some of you trust Brother Brian. I understand. Some of you trust me. So when you have this situation, you go to the source. If someone told me Brother Brian committed fornication, did you know Brian committed fornication? First of all, I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> I'm being serious. I wouldn't believe it. But for the sake of this argument uh, and the statement that I'm making, let's say for some reason... I had an inkling what I might have believed it a little bit. I mean, it's coming from a truthful source, a good source. You know what? I'm going to go straight to him and ask him, what's going on here? I've heard this about you. What's going on? So, brothers and sisters of Christ, when it comes to that situation about me getting married, you have questions. I have a ministry email. I talk to brethren on Skype. Okay? I've got a P.O. box. You can write a letter. Sister in Christ wrote me some hymns. <laughs> Thank you, Sister in Christ. Wrote me some hymns. Okay. You can get in contact and talk to me. And that's what you need to do. When you have me saying one thing and you have this Brother Brian saying another, I understand the trust that some of you, I trust Brother Brian and I trust Philip. What do you do in this situation? You go to the source and you talk to the person is this true? And you talk to them. Okay. Don't fall into the trap of gossip. Don't fall in the trap of mumbling and backbiting and whispering. Don't fall into that trap, okay? Come to me and ask me, is this true? And I'll talk to you and I'll explain in more detail than I am now, like I've done with brethren privately. Brothers in Christ, not the enemy. Like I said, the enemy will take anything and everything and try to use it against you because they don't want the truth. But when it comes to a brother and sisters in Christ, I'll ta tell you about it. It's going to be hard. It'll be hard. I might even tear up a little bit. It was a tough time in my life. I really failed the Lord. You'd have to watch that, and I'll link it below. Uh, apologies to the brethren. And like I said, Brother Brian, when he was in his standing position, he was a brother in Christ that loved his brother, me, he got me through that. Brother JT helped get me through it. Um, I think at the time I was talking to Brother Alexander Hartley got me through it. Uh, Brother Matthew Melanson I think I was talking to at the time got me through it. Um, there was brethren out there that got me through that time period. Fellowship. And I thank the, 
I thank you. I don't want to start crying now. I thank you, Brother and Sister Christ, for, for helping me. And I thank Brother Brian, standing Brother Brian, for helping me. Okay. And then, I want to warn you, brothers and sisters, real quick. I'm sorry this video is going so long, but... Brothers and sisters Christ, if you make comments in the comment section that's trying to provoke me to fight Brother Brian and to play Satan's game and attack him personally and everything, I will delete your comments. Here's one. Under that same video that Brian did, a question and answer, someone said, I got a creepy vibe from Newton. Seems like he tries to copy you. You know what that person's doing? That person's trying to cause division. He's trying to poke the bear, as they say. <laughs> Brother Brian's a pretty big guy. He's a pretty big guy. He's, a, he's safe to say he's a bear. They're trying to poke the bear. They're trying to get us to fight among each other and fight the world's way. And they're just poking Brother Brian and poking Brother Brian. And they step back and go, <laughs> and then they watch the brethren fight it out. And they're laughing. This is one of those people. Okay. All right. And Brian said, yes, he copies me. He just tries to emulate me. I wanted to address this, brother, says Christ. I want to first by saying I've had other people say the same thing about brother Brian to me. People that have come to my, to, not my it's not mine. I slip up sometimes. Please forgive me, Lord, and forgive me, brother, Christ. It's God's ministry. We're all part of God's ministry. We're all part of the same body. We have many members of the same body. But I've had people that come and see me first that never heard of Brother Brian, and then they go over to Brother Brian, and then they come to me. This guy over here looks like he could be your brother. He could be your twin. He does the same things you do. And I have to correct him. I'm not going to be like, yeah, he just likes to copy me and everything and be all prideful and arrogant. No. I tell him, uh, that's the man that led me to Christ. That's the man that taught me the Bible version issue. Showed me absolute truth. That's the man that taught me all the... Um, uh, the major doctrines, okay? Dispensational teaching really opens your eyes when you learn what dispensations are. Dispensational teaching, right? He's the brother that taught me how to study the Bible, do word studies, subject studies, um, expository studies, get a concordance, get a Webster's 1828 dictionary. I got him over there on the shelf, okay? He's a mentor, so it's not that he looks like me and is acting like me. I've learned stuff from him, brothers and sisters of Christ. Okay? Things will be similar because I've learned from him. Okay? And it says right here, yes, he has the same banners as me, same hats as me, etc. The same banner right here that Brian had up at one time. Brothers and sisters of Christ... This is a distraction. When you start attacking this, when you start attacking this, it's a distraction. They're just distracting you from this. Okay. The point I'm trying to make is, is real quick, because I want to say this. I've only got three hats. I'm sorry, four hats, I guess. I keep forgetting. This belonged to my dad. My dad died when I was two years old. He committed suicide. Was he saved? He was raised in a so-called uh, Christian home, Babel building goer home. So knowing what I know now, I don't. The, odd, the odds are that he wasn't saved, but I don't know. Okay, this has got holes in it, and this was given to me by my brother and said, "Hey, you want something that belonged to our dad?" And I said yes, and he gave this to me. So I wear it, but I don't wear it as much. This thing is older than I am. This hat is older than I am. Predates me okay why do i wear this uh sweater king james video ministry because i used to wear this when i was lost and i transitioned to being saved this was my sweater i don't know if you can tell but it's not dark gray anymore it is so faded it's got stains on it when i was doing some staining and everything it's got white spots on the back it's falling apart and god said you know what if you're gonna get another sweater because I'll still use this for when doing dirty jobs and it's cold outside and I have to do painting or something like that. That's what I use this for. And I just keep this stuffed in here because it's like, like I said, I just don't wear it that much because it's something I can pull out and rem remember my dad. But little, remember my dad. I have pictures, but I don't have any memory of my dad whatsoever. But 
I have this, but I wear this. This is the only thing I wear. This is the only sweater I wear for the most part. This one got too bad, started getting some holes, faded, so I bought a new sweater. That's how I live, Brother of Christ. I'm wearing this. This hat was given to me by my uncle, who's also a brother in Christ. It was given to me by my uncle uh, seven years just before I got saved, when I was living at my old house. And this thing's got stains in it and holes, <laughs> a little hole right here on the top. And I'm so blessed this band is still still on here. And this is the only hat I have like this. For a while there, this was the only hat I had to wear outside to uh, block the sun. I was wearing this way before I even got into ministry. But once again, this is a non-argument. Okay? I have some things that are similar. Part of me thought of doing, I don't, like I said, the Bible says jesting, don't use jesting. But part of me wanted to do a video where I, I put this on and show somebody else in a video wearing it going, oh, and toss it and like I can't wear it and walk off the screen. Then come back on wearing this hat and then show somebody wearing this hat and go, oh, I can't use that. And then come back in wearing this, throw it down and act like I'm going crazy and then storm off. Because it's ridiculous. He's trying to act like me. This is not Brian's poster. He didn't create this poster. Peter Ruckman did. Okay? Did Brian have this up in his videos? Yes, he did. But once again, he was a mentor. He led me to Christ. He taught me how to do ministry. Okay? But I wear this hat not because I'm trying to be like Brother Brian. Does Brother Brian wear a sweater like this? No. Am I wearing this hat because I'm trying to be like Brother Brian? No. I wore this hat before I came across Brother Brian. All right. Before I even got saved. So that's why I got this hat. I bought this for the winter time. It's got, it says KJV on one side, but I don't, I don't like any markings on my forehead because that's what they do with these. That's why I bought a hat that had no markings right here. I don't want anything on my forehead when it comes to markings. So this, the marking that says KJV, I put it behind me. That's why it doesn't show. I don't, I don't want to be comfortable and promote that it's okay to have markings on your forehead. And I bought this in the last two years because I started learning how to fish, kayak fishing on the ocean. You have to go out in the mornings and it has to be a day where it's not windy and it's, it's not choppy, it's really smooth water. And you go out there and you fish for, for rockfish and lingcod. You can even drop a cage, a little small cage, for crab fishing and crabbing and everything. This, the wind won't blow off. This, the wind will blow off <laughs> if it gets a little windy. There's times I got out there once and I was trying to row and row and I'm rowing for like 30 minutes and then I stop and it feels like I didn't even get anywhere. It got too windy. We all like, we have to call it, it's too windy, we're heading in. But this doesn't blow off as much. But I only wear this one when I'm fishing. But needless to say, is this the standard, brothers and sisters of Christ? Is this the standard, brother? Or the verses is, but I'm talking about having a banner like this. Is this the standard for which we judge people by? No. Nope. See, uh, what is this? Uh, if I say the KJB is God's perfect word, I can't do that because Brother Brian said that, and that's copying Brother Brian, and we can't do that. You see how you can take it too far, and it can just be out of control? If I was wearing the plaid and wearing the exact, I'm talking about the exact same hat that he's wearing, and I made a, a de uh, the bookshelf that looked exactly like his, bought the exact same swords, had the exact same setup, and when you see him in the black vest, oh, i got to have one of those, and now I'm wearing a black vest. That would be a little, a little creepy. <laughs> you know, when you take it, you can take it a little too far, and it can be a little creepy. But when it comes to ministry work, there's going to be a lot of things that I do that's the same as Brother Brian, because he mentored me. He led me to Christ. He taught me how to do ministry. Okay. And now he's fallen away. He's, been, he's become part of the falling away. Okay. Uh, Brother Brian reads his Bible every morning and evening. Start the day and end the day with the Word. You know where I got that from? I got it from Brother Brian. He taught me that. Start our day with the Word of God and end your day with the Word of God. Well, but I can't tell you that because Brother Brian said it and I would just be copying Brother Brian and everything. 
Don't you dare copy him. Is that supposed to be a response, Mother? Is this the final authority, the, having a banner? This. Wearing this. This. Is that the final authority? Or is this our final authority? And when you start making those accusations, yeah, he's just trying to be like me, and he's trying to emulate me, that's the way the lost world acts. When I first got saved and came across Brother Brian's channel at King James Video Ministries, they were calling him a Rockmanite. Oh, you're just copying him, and you're trying to emulate him and everything. Anything to, to keep from listening to the message that Brian was trying to preach. And that's the whole point. Tear the character, tear the person down, and, and fight and argue about all this stuff to distract you from what really matters. The Word of God. Okay. But what does the Bible say? John 7, 24. This should be a memory verse, Brother Says Christ. I need to memorize it. Judge not according to the appearance but judge righteous judgment. This isn't righteous judgment. He's false and he's fake and he's a fraud because he's just copying Brian Denlinger and, and he does the same posters as he does and he wears a hat that's the same shape but not the same hat, but the same shape it looks like. This looks more like an Aussie hat, like Australian hat. It doesn't look like a, it's not a cowboy hat. Okay. We're not to judge on the outward appearance. But we're to judge righteous judgment. Okay. That is Satan's game. Judging, I'm serious. The enemy, the servants of Satan, they use those attacks on brethren. They used as attack on my brother, Brother Brian. He's still a brother. Despite everything that's happened, despite what he just did to me, he's still a brother in Christ. And he desperately needs Jesus Christ right now to get him back on the right path. And drop, but the only way that's going to happen is if his pride gets dropped. Pride, uh, the Lord's got to drop his pride. Okay. But I'm not going to play Satan's game to judge on the outward appearance. The lost world used to go, I said, used to go after Brian Coleman Weckman Knight. He had books, banners, teachings of Brother Ruckman. He would do, sometimes he'd do a drawing that looked like the same drawing that Brother, Brian, or Brother uh, Peter Ruckman did. And people would attack him for it. I'm not going to play Satan's game and attack him for it. Why? He learned a lot from Peter Ruckman. He learned about the Bible version issue from Peter Ruckman and some other books. He learned about a lot of truth from Peter Ruckman. Peter Ruckman was spoiled by philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and now Brian is. That's true. But brothers and sisters of Christ, we're not to judge on the outward appearance. And when someone, when you're mentoring someone and they adapt some things that you do to look like you a little bit, I'm not talking about exactly like you, but look like you a little bit, Philippians 3.17, Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so you have us for an example. Okay. Am I going to have some things like this banner? I have a banner in the other room that has the Bible at the top and everything. I've got a marker board that I use. I like to set outside on the deck and preach. I like to stand sometimes. I'm having a hard time standing long, time, long periods of time, but I've had videos where I like to stand outside and do stuff outside. I'm going to have some things that look similar to what Brother Brian does. He doesn't have the copyright on all this. That's pride. That's arrogance. That's Ego, 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 ego. Is there an echo in here? Ego, ego. I learned a lot from him. So I have some things that I do because he taught me that. Okay. Right. Another thing they're saying is you're trying to live off Brian. I don't, I do not take, I don't take donations, Brother Jesus Christ. I'm not trying to emulate Brother Brian and copy Brother Brian because I, I, I'm just trying to do it for the money. I'm trying to live off Brother Brian. Brother Brian never said that, praise the Lord. I don't know. <laughs> when you think someone can't fall further than they have fallen, I've always said Brian's fallen away to the ways of the world and putting the world first. And then he goes and slanders me and lies about me. He can fall further. 
He hasn't made that statement. This is something I heard from uh, the enemies of King James Video Ministries and uh, Bible-believing, God-fearing ministries, God's ministry through the word, perfect written Word of God. Okay, they would use that a lot and would attack me a lot. I remember when I first got into ministry, I asked Brother Brian, I said, listen, the reason I hesitated for so long is because I don't want, you know, I, people are going to say I look like you, the beard. I have a lot more gray now because I'm getting older. But when I first started and Brian was younger, he had we both had gray in the exact same spots in our beards. It's like, brother, I don't want to be ammunition for the lost world, the enemies of the ministry, uh, to attack you. Okay, that's why I'm not giving the lost world ammunition to attack Brother Brian by playing Satan's game and start attacking him personally the way he attacked me personally. Okay? I'm not playing that game. I'm not going to give the lost world. But when I got into ministry, I remember talking to him and saying, hey, uh, and he's like, we're not to judge on the outward appearance, but judge righteous judgment. You just do the work of the Lord. Don't worry about me. I can handle it. <laughs> that's what he said. I can, that's the attitude he had. I can handle it. Don't worry about me. You just serve the Lord. I miss my brother in Christ. Okay, I miss my brother in Christ. Okay. I do not, oh sorry, I do not take donations. What I do, brother, says Christ, God has provided for me. I live like I'm dirt poor. Some people say, you live so poor and frugal. I have one, I have two sets of jeans that are good at all times, and then when one of them starts going bad, then I'll go get another pair of jeans and everything. And I do my best to live frugal. But God has provided for me. I have food and raiment. The Bible says, with food and raiment, therewith be content. Okay? God is taking care of me. And I praise the Lord for that. And that could disappear at any time. We can all go through some hard times, brothers of Christ. That can disappear at any time. I always try to point, brethren, to ministries that live off donations. I would push people to King James Video Ministries. I'd push people to Brother Brad at Avonshine, um, at Accountable KJV. He doesn't advertise it that much, but if you listen to his testimony, he lost his job when this things that were going on in the world... And he decided, you know what, Lord, I can sit here and complain about it, or I can find a way to serve the Lord. And he started getting into ministry. And he's got a donation tab on his channel, and he doesn't advertise it. He doesn't jump up and down. I need donations. I can't do the work without donations. No, he doesn't. He trusts the Lord. Okay? But I push people to that. Uh, Brother JT at the Wine Press. Okay, you can do donations there because he's living, from my understanding, he's living off the donations, trying to continue the work of the Lord. That's what I've tried to do. I, I was, I, I don't, because people say, well, we want to donate with it. Brother, Sister Christ, if you can't find a good ministry to donate to that you can't support anymore, then buy Bibles for brethren. Good Bibles. I know brethren that have Bibles that are falling apart because they were cheap and they can't afford the $100 Bibles. Okay, like this, close to $100. This Bible was close to $100. They can't afford really good lambskin Bibles that last your lifetime and that of your child's lifetime, you know? They can't afford that. There are brethren out there that are hurting and can't afford food and raiment. Help them out. Go uh, try to do a ministry where you go into town, handing out gospel tracts out, and I, and offer food. Okay, there's other ways you can spend their, your money serving the Lord, serving the brethren. But I don't live off Brother Brian. I he's attacking Brother Brian because he wants Brother Brian to get less donations and he can get more donations. Eh, wrong. I don't take donations. That's not what this is about. I want my brother back. I want Brother Brian to be back on his standing position, loving the Lord and loving His Word like he did before. I want my brother in Christ back. Not the fallen brother in Christ that he is now, going the way of the world. Doing things the world's way. Attacking people the world's way. Mm -hmm. Titus chapter 3, verse 8. This is a faithful saying, and these things will I, things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and striving about the law, 
foolish questions. Isn't he just trying to be like you and, and this and this? That's foolishness. This is what matters. Point at both of them, the Bible. That's what matters. Okay. For they are unprofitable and vain. Arguing about a, a poster, what hat I wear, that's vain. It's pointless. What matters is what I'm saying. Do I line up with the scriptures? There's a, there's a great saying, brothers and sisters of Christ, the scriptures are always right, and I'm wrong. You say, what is that? Why is that? If I don't line up with the scriptures, the scriptures are always right, and I'm wrong. This is our final authority. This is what we're supposed to be fighting for, brothers and sisters in Christ. What happened to us fighting the good fight? No, now we're going to argue over, oh, he's got a hat that looks like Brother Brian. He's just kind of emulate Brother Brian. He's got a poster like Brother Brian's got that he didn't even create. Oh, but that's a, uh, he's just trying to mimic him. It's, un, it's unprofitable and it's vain. This is all just to distract you from the truth. Standing for the Word of God. A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition, reject. After the first and second admonition, reject. Knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of himself. Being condemned of himself. Brian has gotten so prideful and so puffed up and so full of himself that he would slander a brother in Christ and betray brother Christ and truly, truly stab him in the back. He turned his back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ with the life that he lives every day. He's turned his back on it. I cannot go the direction Brian is going in. I have to say goodbye to my brother. I can't go in the direction he's going in. I cannot follow him and I have to move on. The ministry continues. And if I do not, then I will become just like he is. Angry, bitter, prideful, hateful, stooping to the world's level, uh, uh, the lost world's level, and how they deal with things instead of dealing with things the way the Bible says to deal with them. Go in the way of the world, holding traditions of men above the Word of God, the commandments of God. I don't want to become a Pharisee. I don't want to become a scribe. I don't want to become a Sadducee. Okay? I can't follow Brother Brian. He's going in a direction I can't go. And my warning for you, brothers and sisters in Christ, is I'm not going to tell you you can't watch him and stay away from him. But I will tell you this. If you continue to really vehemently support him and follow him, be very careful that you don't wind up like him. Going the way of the world, turning your back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ, becoming prideful. All those things I said, angry to bitterness to hate. Stooping to the, to the lost world's level in how you act. And how you treat brothers and sisters in Christ. And stoop to the lost world's level and how you act and react and treat the lost world. Okay. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you're going to have to count the cost. You're going to have to count the cost. Matthew chapter 19 verse 24. A few more verses and we're done. Matthew 19 verse 24. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath forsaken house, or brethren, or sister, or father, or mother, 
Are you counting the cost? Or wife, or children, or land, are you counting the cost? For my name's sake, should, shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit an everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Turn over to Luke chapter 14, verse 26. If any man come to me, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. There are brethren out there that are failing. I've talked to some of them. They make great pastors but they don't qualify to be preachers. They don't fall, qualify in 1 Timothy 4. I hope I used the right reference for a bishop and a deacon. Okay. They're married to lost people, lost women, not people, lost women. Children are being raised in the admonition of the Lord. They still have a lot of sin in their life that they won't give up. They don't qualify. They're not blameless. Okay. 27. And whosoever, like I said, present tense sin, they repent, get that sin out of their life, they get their house in order, then they qualify. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Are you counting the cost? Did you read what we read there, the cost? For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it? Lest happily after he had laid the foundation is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consoleth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage, and desire conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Now this is Old Testament, but for instruction righteousness, I read those because are you counting the cost? Being a Christian today, being a Christian today, it's going to cost you, brothers and sisters of Christ. I'm going to go over and start counting the cost. You know what it's cost me? It's cost me my family, my lost family members. The only family member that I still have really, really close relationship with is my uncle, who's a brother in Christ, a Bible-believing, God-fearing man. He's the only one. I've had, I've lost, I don't have good relationship with a lot of my family members. Okay. Are you counting the cost? I've lost friends when I got saved. I lost my wife because I chose the Word of God, the Word of God over her. How many brethren out there are willing to do that? And then I get slandered. Oh, he, she wasn't your wife. It was just fornication. That's a lie. It's a total lie. I get, are you counting the cost, brother and sister Christ? You guys might have a list that's twice as long as mine. Okay. Wife, brother and sister Christ, I lost my daughter to the world. Because I stood for this book. And as I stand for this book and the life that I live for Jesus Christ pushed her away. And she went to the world. She's now passed away. And she's in God's hands. Not, not in heaven, but she's in God's hands. Right. I just lost a mentor that I love and care about. Because I'm standing for the word of God and he's going against the word of God. I'm doing my best not to be a respecter of persons. We're going to get into a series of studies, and the first one we're going to get into is, is the most dangerous Christian out there. And what is it? A respecter of persons. If Brian starts going the wrong direction, and you're a respecter of persons, then you're going to go the same direction he's going. doesn't matter how wrong he is, he's the captain of your salvation, and he's the one you follow. 
because you're of Brian Denlinger or you're of Philip Newton or you're of whoever. They're the worst Christians out there and we're going to get into that. But I just lost a mentor because I choose to serve God and He comes first and His Word comes first. Brothers and sisters of Christ, are you counting the cost? Are you falling into the world and playing Satan's game? Becoming a respecter of persons? Getting into fights and arguments, drama over stuff like this? Are you counting the cost, brothers and sisters of Christ? Some of you, like I said, have a list a lot longer than mine. Are you counting the cost? Brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, somehow I missed a part. Okay, this is where I missed it. Said here, it, he, Brian is threatening me by saying, I'll expose him as a fraud if, if he doesn't take my videos down. Well, two things. If I'm truly a fraud, and then you should expose me. And I'm not challenging him to. I don't want him to stoop to that level. To lie against, against, against the word of God and against the brother in Christ, to the brother and about a brother in Christ. I don't want him to lie. I don't want him to lie. But here's the thing. I talked with the brother in Christ. I've already prayed about this in the past. And I said, I kept trying to tell myself, I'm not supporting uh, born-again barbarian ministries. I'm supporting old King James video ministries. And I talked with some brethren and it's like, you do realize, and God put it in my heart too and said, hey, you can't support the old without supporting the new. So, Brother Brian got on to me and told me, uh, I'm not allowed to add any more of his videos. I don't have his permission to add any more, upload any more of his videos. So I stopped. I didn't get prideful. I didn't get arrogant. I didn't get vengeful and start lying about him and stabbing him in the back and slandering him. He's always going to bring it back to our disagreement on the Bible. He's, that's stabbing me in the back for correcting you as a brother in Christ, saying you're wrong and the Bible's right. That's what you taught. That's what Brian taught me to do. Okay? The Bible is our final authority in all matters of faith and practice. Okay? But I'm trying to list it. The first thing he told me to do. And I, I was like, okay, fine. I said, okay. I put in there and said, I'm not your enemy. Pride is your enemy. And it is. I remember putting that in the comment section. I'm not your enemy, brother. Pride is your enemy. And I put, by thy words thou shalt be justified. And by thy words thou shalt be condemned. As you wish, brother. So I haven't uploaded any more videos. He started deleting my comments on Rumble and on his YouTube channel. I try to ignore the YouTube channel, but um, uh, I have to keep remembering because it's new. Uh, Born Again Barbarian Ministries. Okay? I had to, I got my uh, comments deleted on that. So Brother Brian doesn't want me commenting, I won't comment. I'm not going to act prideful and arrogant, and I'm not going to wage a campaign personally against Brother Brian. I'm just going to stick with the scriptures, and if he doesn't want the scriptures, he'll get, end up, con like he did here, he'll end up condemning himself, and he wants to go the way of the world, go the way of the world. I'm not going the direction he's going, and I'm not playing Satan's game. Okay? So I took down the videos. That's why I took them down. I can't, I can't support the, the new ministry that he's part of. Uh, born again barbarian I can't and I, I, I wish I could still support old King James video ministries but I can't I just can't I don't want to I can't go his the direction he's going and I don't want to become like him there was a, like I said the brother Sark, there was a time where I said he was the best of us absolutely that's not true for today. Now, in my secondary channel, I haven't got to that one yet, but I'll get to the secondary channel, and I'll start taking all his videos off that one as well. So I'm pretty sure he wants both channels, and I'm not going to try to be deceptive and say he doesn't know about that channel. Maybe he forgot about it, and I can just leave it. 
I'll get to it and I'll get off at that channel. I didn't think about it till today. All right. I'll get off. But the point is, is I am trying to live peaceably among all men. He doesn't want that? Fine. Took it off. But if he wants to rage a campaign and start trying to tear down my character, God will deal with him. God will deal with him. I'm done with him. Okay? Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you've made it this far, even though you watch his ministry and you watch my, uh, my ministry, God's ministry, it's supposed to be God's ministry, okay, um, for all of us, if you decide, you know what, I'm going to have to give you up, Brother Philip, please hear, heed this warning. Okay, what I want to leave with you, the warning, is that words, what this ministry was about, words have meaning. Don't change the words of God, okay, and think that you're, you can replace them with other words. Words have meaning, okay? Remember, this is your final authority in all matters of faith and practice, not this man right here. This is. Make sure you continue to live for the Lord through His Word. Obeying His Word, living His Word, standing for His Word, okay? This is your foundation in all matters of faith and practice. And brothers and sisters in Christ, don't, don't take your eyes off Jesus Christ. That's what Brother Brian has. He's taking his eyes. Remember the story of, Paul, of Peter. I was about to say Paul again. Peter walking on water. We did that. Courageous, I think it was a courageous man, foolish man. Peter walks on water. He kept his eyes on Jesus. He was doing just fine. If you keep your eyes on Jesus, he can come back any day now. That keeps your eyes on Jesus and keeps you motivated to live for the Lord and do what's right. If you're keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ, you'll do just fine. The Bible says, looking for that blessed hope. In this present world, looking for that blessed hope. It's an action. The moment you take your eyes off that blessed hope, what else is there to look at? The world. When Peter took his eyes off Jesus and put it on the water, what started happening? He started sinking into the water. If you take your eyes off Jesus Christ and you put it on the world, what's going to happen to you, brother and sister Christ? You're going to start sinking into the world, and you start going to be part, and you're going to become part of the falling away. You're going to become part of the falling away. If you stop watching this ministry, please stay. With this, make sure this is hiding, you're hiding this in your heart and you're living it and you're keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ. Keep that helmet for a hope of salvation on. Brother Jesus Christ, don't take it off and don't let no man steal your crown. Don't let them get you to take it off. Oh, Jesus isn't coming back for another 10 years, 5, 10 years. Don't let them take your eyes off Jesus Christ and put it on the world. Okay? And through all of this, brothers and sisters in Christ, like I said, through all this, counting the cost, what you've had lost for Jesus Christ, what you've had to give up for Jesus Christ, the mistakes that you made and you missed out on blessings, the cost, missed out on blessings, okay? There's an old hymn, that, there's not, not an old hymn, but there's a hymn that I like, and it's, it's farther on. Still go farther, count the milestones one by one. Jesus will forsake you never, it is better farther on. Brothers and sisters of Christ, no matter what we have to go through down here, no matter what the cost is, stay in that standing position and remember it's better farther on. You keep your eyes on that, that blessed hope. We're going to be with our Lord and Savior someday. We're all going to be together. We're all going to be of one mind. With the same mind and of the same judgment. No more division. No more watching brothers fall. Watching brothers fall. Brothers and sisters in Christ. What happens when tomorrow comes and, he, and Jesus hasn't come yet? Farther on, still go farther, count the milestones one by one. Jesus will forsake you never, it is better farther on. 
Imagine a mountain. You get to the top of the mountain, you think, that's it, we're there. And you get to the top of the mountain and you see another valley and another mountain to climb. Farther on, still go farther. You get to the top of that one. What happens? You see another mountain. Farther on, and you keep your hope up. Don't lose hope. Catching away the body of Christ is going to happen. I do believe it's going to, we're supposed to believe it's going to happen in our lifetime, and it can happen any day now, brothers and sisters Christ. It can happen any day now. Okay. 2 Thessalonians 2.3 is where you read, Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. We're not going to be here when that man of sin gets revealed, so there's going to be a falling away as it's leading up to it. But Jesus Christ, there's going to be a falling away. And like I said, I'm angry at the falling away. I don't want to hold hate and anger and bitterness. I have every right to be angry at Brother Brian for what he just did. And if he did that to you, brothers and sisters in Christ, you would have every right to be angry with him. But in these last days, it's not just that. There's a lot of things about Brother Brian that's just, he's become a part of the falling away. Brethren that I've loved have become part of the falling away. And they're taking their helmet for a hope of salvation off. The world's becoming more important than the Word of God and than the brethren. And it's just like, Brian was the best of us. He's my mentor, was my mentor. If it can happen to him, if he can become part of the falling away, it can happen to any of us. The Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil going around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Jesus, God manifest in the flesh, warned Peter that Satan sought to sift him like wheat. He's sifting uh, men in ministry like wheat. Getting them to turn on the Word of God. We are in the last days, farther on. Okay. Another hymn, another good hymn was, um, It is well with my soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul here's the next part though satan should buffet though trials should come let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. What was that other that we read? Count the milestones one by one. Jesus will forsake you never. It is better farther on. Brothers and sisters in Christ, day by day. That's, a, that's one of my all-time favorite hymns. It got me through some hard, hard times. Day by day, as a Christian. Day by day, and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here. Trusting in my Father's wise bestowment, I've no cause for worry or for fear. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you don't watch this, this ministry anymore, okay, memorize some hymns. So I thank the sister in Christ for, for writing these for me. Memorize some hymns. When you're going through some hard times and Satan's trying to buffet you and he's trying to get you to act like the world, look like the world, act like the world, and get you to go the ways of the world, 
and he's really pressuring you, and he's trying to come down hard on you, you resist the devil and he must flee. Sing some hymns. Quote scripture from, from heart. Uh, get into some Bible studies. Start learning to do Bible studies yourself. Word studies, subject studies, expository studies. Brothers and sisters in Christ. So from this day forward until, until, because I'm not slamming the door and locking it with 50 million locks on Brother Brian. Until he repents on the imminent return of Jesus Christ, turning his back on it, how he's treated me, okay? And you say, what about Christmas? I wish he would repent on Christmas, but I don't think that's what destroyed him. A year ago, this past, like last month, a year ago, he turned his back on the imminent return of Jesus Christ, and he's gone ever since. Ever since, he's not looking for Jesus Christ every day with the life he's living. He's got to drop the pride. You can't talk to him about anything else. He's got to drop that pride. I'm not slamming the door on, on him forever. He repents or God chastises him to the point where he gets back on the right path. I'll forgive my brother. I want my brother in Christ back. But from this day forward, I will not be supporting King James, it's not King James Video Ministries. I love King James Video Ministries, but it's not King James Video Ministries anymore. I can't support uh, Born Again Barbarian. I can't support the direction that Brian's going in. I don't want to become like that, and I don't want the other brethren to become like that. Okay. So, I'm not going to watch his videos. I'm not going to respond to him unless I get an email of him repenting and whatnot. But I'm not going to be going over to his channel and watching his videos. So don't come over here and say, he said this about you or he said that about you. I'm done with them. Okay? I'm done with them. He wants to go the way of the world. He can go the way of the world. All right? This book I had open for this reason. Real quick, Brother Jesus Christ. Now, sorry for the long video. Please have patience with me. And Lord, please have mercy on me through all this. And that knowing the time, that now is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. This is Romans 13.11. Sorry, Romans 13.11. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Don't, don't act like the lost world. Look like the lost world. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be trans... Be, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You're conforming to the world. You're not going to be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Bible says, Love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You're not going to be a good light for Jesus Christ if you start falling back into the love of the world like you did when you were lost. That light's going to fade and be so dim. You're not going to be a light to the world. And let us put on the armor of light. Praise the Lord. Armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Honestly as in the day. Not in riding and drunkenness. Not in chambering and wantonness. Not in strife and envying. I don't do this out of envy. I do it because I need something to block it and I want something good. Okay? It's good. I do these things not out of envy for Brother Brian. The way I teach word studies, Brother Brian taught me that. Okay, but we're not to we're not to not in strife and envying. What Brother Brian's doing is he's causing strife. He's causing division. He is causing division by straying from the word and going the way of the world. He's causing division by attacking brethren personally. He is. Okay, verse fourteen. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. I want to read that for you, brother, sister Christ, if this is the last time you watch one of my videos. Okay? Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. And make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. If something's getting in the way of you and the Lord and His Word, get it out of your life. If something's getting in the way of you and your fellowship with the brethren, this you don't get out of your life. But if it's not this that's getting in the way, it's something worldly, 
Get it out of your life. It's not worth it. Brothers and sisters of Christ, it is not worth it. We are in the last days and we need to strive together. The Bible says, striving together. We need to stand together. We need to get back to house churches. I think that's a big thing that will help the body of Christ in these last days. If we can get back to house churches where there's true accountability. True accountability and we're there to physically help each other out in these hard times. We need to get back to house church. Right now I'm a house church of one. <laughs> That's all I am right now. I joke, it's not a house church with just one. Okay, two or more gathered together. I would love to start a house church. But brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the direction. The ministry's not changing like we're going in a different direction. I just, I have to let Brother Brian go. I have to let him go. He's not going the way of the scriptures. And I'm afraid, brothers and sisters in Christ, if I don't let go of him right now completely, I'll wind up just like him. He can fight, I can fight, and I can bicker, and I can try to I can attack him personally. Not try, I can attack him personally. And I can pull up his mistakes, and he can pull up my mistakes, and we can be fighting each other back and forth. And it's like, that's not what God wants. That's what the lost world wants. So I'm done. And I, I mean that, brothers and Christ. If, people's uh, comments have been disappearing not because of me. But I'm telling you that right now, if you come under this channel and you try to poke me, trying to provoke me to fight Brother Brian and try to, you know, he said this about you and he said that about you, I will delete that comment. If you've got any questions about what I went through with my ex-wife, the wife that I had to put away, if you have any questions, by all means, email me. Ministry email is uh, prayers and testimonies. Uh, I think it's prayers and testimonies 2000. I forgot. 2000. Uh, I'll put it in the comment section too, but it's, it's under the description page. Um, 2000. 18 maybe uh, at outlook.com okay I talked to brethren on Skype and everything and it's like brothers sisters in Christ all I've ever wanted was to serve the Lord serve the Lord with all my heart and to keep exhorting the brethren and keep get you brothers sisters in Christ to stay with the Word of God this is your final authority Keep living for Jesus Christ every day. Are you giving God glory all in everything? Or are you taking the glory for yourself? That's one of the biggest signs of pride. You can see pride in certain men because they take all the glory for themselves. They don't give it to, to the Lord. Are you giving God thanks for everything? Everything. Glory and thanks in everything. I thought I lost a chicken today. And I, I was walking down there. They got in a big fight. I think my rooster's going to die because he was fight, fending something off. And he doesn't look so well. And I was missing a, ch a hen. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, Praise you, Lord. To God be the glory. And I, I, so I was walking with the Lord. And I was like, uh, and I'm trying not to be sarcastic. I'm saying, Lord, I'm not being sarcastic. But I need to start doing this. This is a bad thing that's happened. But it happened for a reason. And Lord... To God be the glory. Thank you, Lord, that all the other chickens are, are back. I was able to herd them up the hillside, which is hard, and get them all back in the coop. But I was missing one hen, and the rooster was looking really bad. And I'm sitting up there listening to uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. I'm on Leviticus right now. And I'm listening to Leviticus, and I'm sitting up there. And then out of the blue, that black uh, hen that I was missing, he came walking up, walking up towards the steps, and he, and she, it's a she, uh, she, she made a noise at me, and got my attention, and looked at me, and said, hey, I need in, it's like she was saying, hey, I need into the coop, and I looked and went, I didn't lose a hen, Lord, and I just started praising the Lord, got that hen inside, but brothers, sisters in Christ, we need to be praising the Lord, even during the bad times, we need to be giving God glory in all things, even the bad things, when bad things happen, and the hard times. This is happening for a reason. It's hard to praise the Lord for what Brother Brian's doing. But it's happening for a reason. 
Maybe this is what God wants. Need to get away from Brother Brian and just focus on it. I've had brethren tell me, and, and brothers in Christ, you're right, uh, you need to get over that and you need to get focused more on the ministry. You need to get over Brother Brian and you get focused on the ministry. Maybe this is God's way of doing it. Praise the Lord. To God be the glory. So, I want to end this. This is the last time you ever watch me, Brother Sis Christ, and you decide to go another way, or follow, continue following King James video, or it's not King James video, but, Born Again Barbarian Ministries, Brother Brian, I'm not going to hate you. I'm not going to put you down. I'm not going to mock you, mouth off, like uh, being sarcastic, mouth, being mouthy. Um, Brother Sis Christ, here it is. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.